is apparently trying to die here. I'm going to give a talk about Apache Open for Business, which is a piece of software from the Apache Foundation that is basically gives you all the functionality to run a business. So it gives you an, an e-commerce site, which is what most people think of when they think of a, um, a shopping cart system. But really, selling an item is just the beginning of running a business. Like in addition to in addition to selling the item, once you find out that you've got a sale, you need to you know, know if it's in your warehouse, know how many items you have in the warehouse, and be able to you know, know what shelf to go to in the warehouse to pick. If you have items that aren't in stock that you need to reorder from your suppliers, all these things are concerns that you have to keep track of when you're running a business. In addition, you have to keep an accounting of all the money that changes hands and whether you've paid your vendors, whether you've paid your suppliers, whether you've paid your employees. So running an, running an e-commerce site, <laughs> it's kind of crazy. The, uh, running, running an e-commerce site, running a business is a lot more than just a shopping cart. And that's, that's what OFBiz attempts to provide. So we're going to give a quick tour of OFBiz and I'm going to show you some of its features, and depending on how long my battery holds out. So, um, I sort of explained, started to explain what OFBiz is. In addition to being an e-commerce system and a business management system, you can also think of it as a library for building business applications. Most people, when they think about an application server, you think about Glassfish, for instance which provides database services and transactions and the kinds of things a programmer needs, but it doesn't help you keep track of your bank account balance. And so a lot of times, programmers will pick a technology like Python or Java or Glassfish or Drupal or PHP, and they look at it purely from a programming perspective without really thinking about how am I going to does this language, does this library provide me the functionality to manage my business processes? Or, because if you try to write all these things from scratch, it's as big a problem, if not bigger, than building an application server. <clears throat> so uh, one additional thing, OFBiz is, of course, free software from Apache. And it primarily runs on the Java VM. But as we'll see later, it lets you use really any language that can be used on the Java VM, which includes a lot more languages than just Java. So OFBiz provides you advanced e-commerce, not just I bought a shirt, but I bought a medium blue shirt, I bought <clears throat> a medium blue shirt, and I am a volume customer, so I get a 10% discount. It manages gift certificates. Um, it manages all of the inventory, like all of the items you sell on the website, you can schedule them in advance. So let's say your business is going to have um, holiday products, like I guess uh, Christmas, if you're going to have Christmas products, you could set those products to not appear until December 1st. And then the site will automatically bring those products up on the front page without you having to do it yourself. So pretty advanced e-commerce. It, uh, it can manage warehouses. It can manage multiple warehouses and multiple retail locations. So for instance, if you had a store that had, like you had a business that has two warehouses, let's say a warehouse in Sao Paulo and a warehouse in Rio de Janeiro, and several retail stores, like three stores in Rio and five stores in Sao Paulo, each of those locations has an inventory of products in it. And each warehouse has an inventory of products. So let's say an order comes in on the e-commerce system. You may have to check several warehouses and maybe even your retail stores to pull together the quantity of product to fulfill that order. Because if you have items sitting on the shelf at a retail store in, in Rio, but a huge order comes into Sao Paulo, it may be worth it to you to pull all those products back to your main location and sell it to the customer. So it can manage that kind of thing. 
It can also manage a manufacturing line. So <clears throat> in addition to products that you buy from someone else to sell, like bottles of Coca-Cola, let's say you have a business where you sell furniture and you make the chairs or the tables as the orders come in. And so you need to keep track of how many orders you have and what stages of completion those orders are in. And that kind of manufacturing can run from simple, like furniture, on up to very complex, like houses, cars, or even a 747 jetliner is an, a manufacturing-based business. It also does accounting on all of these things so that your stock that's in your warehouse, your orders that are sold through your website, all of these go into a general ledger accounting system, which keeps track of accounts payable and accounts receivable. How, how many of you guys have had an experience with an accounting system where it has accounts payable and accounts receivable? So these are good things to keep in mind because even though maybe none of you have had experience with this, every single business has this kind of accounting in it because everyone has to pay taxes, everyone has to keep track of this kind of accounting. So it's, a, it's, a, it's important for business, but not many programmers know about it. So it's actually a really good area, if you're a programmer, to learn about because every single business has to do this. Um, and then of course, OFBiz also does content management, which is more what people think about when they think about web servers. So you can manage reviews, directions, instructions that are associated with all of the products. OFBiz started out in 2001, so the code base has been growing for a long time, so it's, it's quite large. Like, it's, it's definitely bigger than you would want to write yourself. In the first six months, the basic blueprint of it was designed based on some research that an academic guy did, where he went and surveyed lots and lots of businesses, lots of existing businesses, uh, a guy named Len Silverston, and he took he looked for the most common ways people managed their accounting systems in all of these different businesses, like the common patterns between those businesses. And then based on his research, Andy Zaneski and David Jones, who were the original OFBiz authors, they built the base OFBiz system based on that guy's research. The next three years were built fleshing out that blueprint and it became an Apache top-level project in December of 2006. So since 2006, we've been continuing to expand and flesh out the capabilities of the system. Getting started with, uh, with OFBiz is, is pretty easy. All it should take you to get started is three commands. The, if you have SVN installed, you can check out the source code. You have to run a build and then you start it, and you should be able to get a running system doing that, as long as nobody has checked anything into SVN that breaks it. But in general, that, you should be able to get a working system with these three commands. And it comes with Derby, if you know the Derby database, which is a SQL database written in Java. So it, it comes complete with a database and a web server already installed. Um, the e-commerce that comes built in is fairly simple looking, but you can make it look however you want. Um, I covered some of these features already, but like some of the features that OFBiz will do that are more advanced, for instance, you can, in a single shopping session, I could... That this may be the end of the presentation, or we may continue. We'll see. Doesn't fit. Okay. Well, not the same computer. Yeah. So we still got battery power. <clears throat> okay. So, like one of the one advanced thing it will do that not all shopping carts will do. I can log in once, buy two items for myself buy another item for my friend and another item for my other friend and then check out and fill in the shipping addresses for those three people and it will manage that, that process of shipping all those things. Um, 
It also supports configurable products, like even more than just this shirt in red or blue, small, medium, and large. For instance, you can do like a Dell, like Dell.com style site where you, you have a computer, you can put different cards in it, you can put different memory sizes, different hard drives, and those hard drives could have configurable options on them, like do you, know, you want the 5400 or the 7200 RPM hard drive. It can manage that whole shopping process and then give you a ticket price based on all the components that it's built out of. You don't have to sit and create SKU combinations for each and every product combination that is possible in your system. And that, is, that can be a really big deal because like in a computer, if you have five, you know, four different memory sizes, eight different hard drive sizes, six different graphics cards, you could be looking at you know, 2,000 combinations for that computer or m even much more. Um, then I was going to flip over here. Let's see if we can take a look at some stuff. Okay, so this is the very basic e-commerce site that the system ships with, and it's very basic. So my screen is a little small here. There we go. So for instance, like this PC that we were talking about that you can configure, that's on the screen, right? Okay. Like I can configure this, this PC, and I'm going to have to log in here because for configurable items to have to be, you have to log in to configure them. So I'm going to go ahead and sign up with it. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and sign up. Oh, I forgot your password. Huh? It's OK. It may be a little slow for me to go through and sign up, but I'll go ahead and sign up so we can see a shopping session. And so all the, all the usual things when you would sign up for a shopping cart, um, and you, whether you can even solicit to this address or not, and phone numbers. Okay. Okay. And so now that I've got my account. I'm going to log in. Ah. Yeah, let me try a default user. I don't use this default shopping cart very much. I'm going to show you some stores in a second that, don't, that are built on the same infrastructure but use a completely different interface. And so now that I'm logged in, I can you know, select a, some RAM, select a hard drive, select an additional hard drive, add an add a additional network card, and then add this to my cart. And so then. I must have, did I miss something? All right, so now, now we see the calculated price of my cart. And it also, you can see that it supports Google Checkout and PayPal as payment options. System actually supports a lot of different payment options, like authorize.net. Um, I actually built a, a Billetto. Is that the right way to say it? Boleto? Bolet? 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 Like you pay in the bank. Cash. Cash. 
I don't know. Boleto? Is that Boleto? I, I built Boleto payments for OFBiz, actually. So you can take all kinds of different payments. So here you can see my item in the shopping cart. Now, <clears throat> all, of the, all of the orders that come in all go into a back-end system. And I'm going to log into the, the back-end now. And so this is the this is the back end. This is the part of the system for managing the catalog of available of available orders. Um, I'm I believe there is Portuguese support. So oh, even even Brazilian Portuguese. Well, it's we can see if I can still run the system even if it's in Portuguese. So um, I guess you get the top, but. It looks like it's partial, not all of it. So it, it, it would be a great way to contribute to the project, for instance, to help with the Portuguese translation for Brazilian Portuguese, because that should be a pretty easy way to get involved, and it would create a lot of value for people in Brazil. You'd be famous as the guy who like made OFBiz work in Brazil, because you could read it. Um, <clears throat> so then. This is the content system. This is the uh, fabrication is going to be. Now, what is an order? How do you say order? And which one is an order? I can't read it. Is that, is that an order? Which one is an order? Like an order manager. No, that's because I'm going to switch it back to English. So it, <laughs> it has Portuguese, some Portuguese. Tem um pouco de português aí, assim, essa versão. Ok, so, <coughs> all of the orders that come in from the website then will show up back here, the, um, in the order manager, where you can find orders by all kinds of information. The, um, I, might, I might go ahead and show you some more actual other websites that are built with it. So, for instance, this website that I'm pulling up, this is all based in OFBiz, so, but you can see it looks totally different. And all of the orders that come in are, um, these are all for research documents that companies purchase. So even though this front end looks very different, The back end is still all OFBiz. Um, and the same with Another site that we built using Open for Business is uh, the Open Source for America site. So this is a site where we're actually gathering political information about customers. And it's, again, the same, same kind of system. So, for instance, all, the, all, the, all of your customers here, we're using it to manage political information. So, all of the customers that sign in to buy anything through your site, 
all come into this customer management system where you can divide the customers into different classifications, which could be done by what they've purchased or you know what part, what part of the country they're coming from. You can create groupings of your customers for mailing to automatically send them mail offers. So for instance, here, these are people who signed up that said that they use open source at their school. And I can pull up a list of all of the people who say that they use open source at their school and signed up for it. So this is similar to some of the like civic CRM or other CRM websites you'll see out there that they do customer relationship management, letting you track your customers and segment them into groups so that you can sell to them in, a, in an intentful way. Um, let me see. So now I'll just quickly cover some of the actual programming interface. Um, <clears throat> open for Business, because it's an older system, it's from 2001, it doesn't actually use uh, an object relational manager. How many people know about Hibernate? You know about Java Hibernate? So Hibernate maps classes directly onto, onto database tables, which is good in some ways, but many programming languages, especially older programming languages used in business, like COBOL, don't think in terms of um, objects. And there's also SQL. How many of you know how to use SQL? SQL? S S SQL? Um, yeah. So there, if you've used SQL much, you know that there are things you can do in SQL that it's hard to even see how you would do it with objects, that relational models are very powerful. So re that's why relational databases, even though they're a 1960s technology, they're just as active today as when they were invented in the 1960s. So OFBiz primarily manages data in a relational kind of way. It's, its system, the, the way it provides data, looks a lot like a JDBC result set except that you can, for instance, query a, an attached table that's attached through a foreign key just by directly calling on that result set object. So, and it also provides caching in so, the same way that Hibernate does, that when you hit the database and pull the re results into memory, it will hold on to a copy of the data in memory. So for instance, this is what it might look like to fetch some information from the database. You would, here I'm going to query an order header, which is the main structure that stores order information about the customer. And then I want to get a list of roles of people who are attached to that order to find out who the person, who this order was shipped to. So there's a table called order header and a table called order role. So here I fetch the order header and then you can see on here, <clears throat> I, take, I, take the order, I take the order header I get back from here and I find the order roles that are associated with that order, like so that that's the, that's the order we're fetching from. So it's not too complicated, and it saves you writing SQL in some situations. It also, the system, you never call classes directly. There's a, there's a centralized service manager, and every function in OFBiz ha has basically a name and a series of named parameters that you call to invoke that service. So you never call a class directly. You actually just ask the service manager to do things for you. That may look kind of old and clunky, but one of the things that's interesting about it is that you can completely change out the implementation of any service in the system, even with a, a non-object-oriented language like TCL or, um, well, TCL is object-oriented. but you can use, like, for instance, like COBOL. And also you can pass off, you can map any of the internal services to an external computer. Like let's say that you have an older machine that is like your mainframe system. You can tell the service engine to, instead of calling a local class, to go make a call on, on, the, on the mainframe to get the data for that service. So it lets you, it decouples the code very heavily from each other. 
you could say it's kind of like a service-oriented architecture, which is a name they've given this older design. This is, a, this is an example definition. The definitions for services are written in XML. This is like what a definition for a service might look like, where <clears throat> we're going to ask it to ship an order and that we're going to pass it the order ID and whether we want it packed and which facilities or warehouses we want it packed from. So this is like what a definition for a service might look like. Um, how many people are familiar with triggers in SQL, like a trigger in SQL? So OFBiz has a system at the application level that is like an SQL trigger that you can say, if data gets put into the database and it matches these conditions, I want you to call this service. So what that lets you do is it lets you make plugins into the system and not mix your code into the rest of the code of, of the system. So it keeps you from having to sort of make your own private fork which is a problem with a lot of systems, if they don't provide ways to hook into the logic, you're sort of forced to modify the base system. And maybe you have changes for your customer that can't go into the community repository because they are proprietary, you know, which happens in businesses. So you need a powerful way to extend the functionality of the server without mixing your code in so that you can continue to merge changes from upstream and not have it run into your code and create a lot of conflicts in your, in your revision control system in SVN. How many people use Git, G-I-T, like Linux kernel? How do you say G-I-T? Nobody knows, okay. So I guess nobody uses Git. J-E-T, who, kn who knows? Okay, the, it's, it's a repository, it's a source control system. So <clears throat> the, um, what's interesting about Open for Business is what it can potentially do to the way business works. Because currently a couple of large companies like Oracle, SAP, um, and a, it's, a, it's a handful of companies, Microsoft, they write the systems that run all the businesses, like all the accounting, all the, all the warehouse control, and that is what controls society. You know, capitalism and businesses are what control society. So small businesses can't eas cannot easily afford this type of software that very large companies use. And that's why this project is interesting, because this is a piece of free software that does the same thing as the pieces of software that run gigantic companies, like really huge companies. And as, as all of us know, those companies control the world. Like everything in this room, like Telefonica, you know, the, every single, every, every piece of metal in this building, like every computer, every piece of clothes that we're wearing, our shoes, all of these things were made by corporations and they all were built in warehouses using manufacturing processes. So if we can build free software that controls businesses, we may be able to change the way businesses work the same way that the internet changed the way people communicated. Because before the internet, you had just very large companies like TV stations like Globo and they created the message, they controlled the message that everybody would get. So right now, Oracle, Microsoft, SAP, they control business and they control the way business is conducted. But if we make free software where we can control our own small businesses, eventually those small businesses may grow into big businesses. And if they're controlled by free software, we can change the way those businesses cooperate and collaborate with each other. So it has the potential to be an important revolutionary tool. So. That is uh, most of my talk. The, um, ah, this is also interesting, though. One thing to think about is most programmers don't work for a company that makes proprietary software. 
Like how, how many people are programmers out here? How many of you work for a company who mainly makes money selling a piece of licensed software? So this is the case with mo did, did you understand what, what I was saying? Like <clears throat> most people who program, they program for a business to like make small improvements or manage the computers at that business. They don't write a piece of commercial software that gets sold. And even if you do work for a company like Microsoft, when Microsoft makes money off of those licenses, your salary probably won't change. You'll just have a job still. So not many companies write operating systems for a living. Not many businesses have a reason to pay people to write operating systems or web servers or other you know, base technology components. But almost every business needs to pay people to write code that manages a warehouse, manages an accounting system, manages their customers. So as a programmer, these are really important skills and the number of dollars that will be available, the number of HAL that will be available to pay programmers to work on open source if open source business software takes off will be a much, much larger amount of money than is available to pay people to work on Linux or Apache web server. So any questions? Um, I'd be happy to answer. Did you say many factors uh, need to use uh, open, so open server uh, to solve uh, small, small business? Is it, more, is it easy for for some small business uh, company, uh, it's much more using open software, of course, but uh, uh, in this way. Right, right now, open for business is probably not as easy to use as QuickBooks, but I don't know what the the popular accounting system for small businesses is in Brazil. Does anyone know what that is? Fabiani, do you, do you know what the popular accounting software is in Brazil for small businesses? Vou falar em português para I'm going to speak Portuguese. Uh, o que eu tenho visto de uma ferramenta parecida para e-commerce é aquela ferramenta que é mesmo usada pelo submarino, que a maioria dos pequenos negócios quando colocam para vender na internet e usam essa. Eles a, a, a website em Brasil called Submarino, that's pretty much like Amazon, uh, and they have the, their own software and they sell or serve the software for several small business. I don't know if this is the most popular, but it's very clear when you, you are using it. It's very common to see uh, websites using that, so I don't know if it's the most popular one, but anyway. I have a question. Okay, uh, do you have Offbiz in a cloud environment so uh, small companies could, instead of installing Offbiz, just buy for using it? Yeah. There, there, <laughs> there is a Amazon EC2. If um, does, does everybody know what Amazon EC2 is? Um, you know what that is. So you can use Amazon EC2 to run OFBiz. There, there are images available. Um, that may be the easiest way to get started. Yeah, well, no. Uh, not to buy it, but there, Amazon has a service where instead of you having a server, you can rent a server from Amazon. And it's very inexpensive to get started. Any other questions? Pessoal, se alguém tiver alguma pergunta, quiser perguntar em português, eu posso traduzir a pergunta e a resposta para quem não, não fala inglês. Tem alguma pergunta? A última pergunta que eu fiz foi se podia rodar o Offbiz num, num sistema de computação em nuvem, em cloud computing, para em vez de você instalar na sua própria empresa o Offbiz, uh, poder alugar um espaço num servidor e usar remoto. 
ele disse que já tem uma imagem disponível do, do Offbiz no servidor de, de cloud da Amazon, que se chama EC2. Então, existe uma imagem lá, você, se você quiser usar, em vez de você instalar no seu próprio servidor, você poderia comprar, um, alugar né, um espaço no, no cloud da Amazon e usar de lá. Mais alguma pergunta? Uh, teve um pedido aqui para fazer um resumo rápido do que foi a palestra em português, para quem não, não conhece muito inglês. Eu vou fazer o meu resumo porque eu conheço o projeto Alphibis já há bastante tempo. Esse projeto começou até numa comunidade que eu participo, que se chama Java Tools, e depois se tornou um projeto da Fundação Apache. E ele, ele, é, ele nasceu como um, um RP open source, né? ele é um RP super completo, você pode fazer e-commerce, você tem toda a parte de conteúdo, tem muita coisa, o sistema é gigantesco. Mas além de ser um ERP, ele também é um conjunto de bibliotecas que permite que você construa outras aplicações de negócio. Então tem uma série de componentes, se você não quiser usar o Offbiz ou o ERP completo, você pode criar a sua, a sua própria aplicação usando esse framework. Né? Ele existe uma espécie de um framework. E ele é todo feito em Java, é open source. Uh, tem tradução para português, embora ela não esteja completa, mas seria muito fácil se vocês precisam de uma, principalmente uma ferramenta de e-commerce, ou conteúdo, ou blog, coisas assim, você pode usar o Offbiz para construir esse tipo de aplicação. Uh, o Ian vai ficar sentado lá perto do... Do, da telefônica, perto do estande da telefônica. Se alguém quiser experimentar, aprender como é que instala, é só procurar por ele, leva o computador que ele ensina como é que instala, como é que usa e dá um, um treinamento rapidinho. Para quem estiver procurando soluções para fazer aplicações comerciais, o Offbiz é uma solução bem interessante. Se vocês quiserem dar uma olhada, é só procurar o Ian lá. Mais alguma pergunta, pessoal? Uh, Ian, uh, Brazilian tax system is quite complicated. Uh, I believe you heard. Is there a way to set up this and off this or something like that? There, there is not support for the Brazilian tax system in OFBiz. We need even Portuguese, Brazilian Portuguese. However, um, I think the basic components of business are going to be the same, like orders, warehouses, salaries, all, all the basic components of business are the same. So the trigger feature I was talking about earlier where you can latch into when an order is created. You could add a trigger that says, you know, when an order is created and if it contains products that are of this type, then this ministry must have its fee as, a, added to the order. And now orders in OFBiz have a, a support for a thing called an order adjustment, which is just a financial adjustment to the order. And they can be separated out and you can have as many as you want. So it's not like fixed into the database table where you have like, you know, order item tax and that's it. You have the items and then you have the adjustments. So you could have it like, this is the main finance tax, and this is the fruit tax, and this is the you were driving this way on the road tax, you know, and what it, I understand that it's pretty crazy with the Brazilian taxes. So I'm very, very, very curious about that and would love to work with somebody even after I go back to the United States to correspond about trying to do that in, in OFBiz. I think uh, I'm very interested in challenging tax systems. Like that would be fun to try to work on. That was a great question. 
Mais alguma pergunta? Não? Bom, pessoal, então vou só agradecer o Ian. Obrigado pela palestra. Foi ótimo ter... E quem quiser, não percam a chance de conversar com o Ian lá, sentado lá perto da, do estande da Telefônica, que vale a pena. Tem bastante conhecimento aqui, vamos aproveitar, né? Bom, a próxima palestra é às quatro, é comigo e o Bruno Souza, sobre Java Livre. Quem quiser participar vai ser, eu acho, bem interessante. A gente vai fazer algumas, vai dar algumas notícias que foram dadas pela Oracle há meia hora atrás. Então, tem bastante coisa nova aí, tá bom? A gente se vê às quatro.